because you know what? They might not share your opinion on feminism or your false stats or read the cutouts from Cosmo, putting them together with different fonts, like a serial killer sending a ransom note. Maybe their, their garage doesn't look like that. They're too busy creating actual treatments and finding cures for cancer that will save women's lives. No, 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 halt the breast cancer research. Halt the Human Genome Project because Charles M. Blow is wearing a pussy hat. The New York Times decided to, in the wake of the sex scandals, uh, write about it. Charles M. Blow. <laughs> but that's it. Uh, question of the day, before we get to it. When you've been reading about the eruption of sexual harassment and sexual assault coming out of Hollywood, but you know, post Weinstein, has your instinct been like that of Charles M. Blow's to think of it as uh, a male privilege or a white privilege issue like him with the New York Times? Or, or, or did you, instead of looking at this through the prism of gender, or sex, we can't say gender anymore, or race, uh, did you look at it about as an issue regarding human decency and treatment of women? Mm. All people. What's more productive, the New York Times, real news, Charles M. Blow approach, or looking at this uh, as a, a moral absolute de-threading of basic moral fiber in society? You let me know. Um, this is the article from the New York Times. This was trending everywhere. Charles M. Blow. Very first paragraph. He says, Weinstein is a jumping off point. Okay. And then goes straight to, with the recent rash of high profile accusations of sexual harassment from Harvey Weinstein, starting to George H.W. Bush and Mark Halperin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Weinstein, to, okay, Weinstein is a repeat sexual offender. Yes. George Bush grabbed a tushy in a wheelchair. Okay, <laughs> took advantage. It's like the old guy stealing stuff in the store. You kind of expect it a little bit. <laughs> yep, yep. The old the guy with dementia ramming people at Costco with a shopping cart, laughing his ass off. You're like, ah, if you were 20, I'd probably, yeah. I'd probably Producing was fun. Weinstein's side job. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. What do you do, Harvey? I dabble in producing, but I find myself an artist of rape. <laughs> George W. Bush. Mark Halperin. Okay, this is important to see that the political uh, angle that's going on there. And, he, does, and he, he uses this to set up the checking male privilege. The whole column is about checking male privilege, and he sets it up with false stats. So right away, his first statistic, one in five women are raped. No, we've been through this. It's, it's about one in 1900, okay? The, the one in five that has been debunked, actual FBI statistics is 52 point something forcible rapes per 100,000 women. It's one in 1900. That's no. not How true. How long is that going to stay around? I mean, we've debunked as long it as, so many as times. As long as Blow writes about it. Next claim, <laughs> one in five women sexually assaulted on college campuses. If there's one in five women raped, you would think there's more sexual assault like on campuses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't think it's the same number. But again, because none of their stats mean anything. So the survey used to support this claim is incredibly broad. The CDC survey that he's quoting actually asked a question about sexual contact while drunk, high, drugged, or passed out and able to consent. It didn't actually even refer to specific instances of unwanted sexual contact. That's where the one in five mm -hmm. number yeah. comes from. So it's important to note that this is New York Times. The most... By the way, most and again, CDC... Survey. Right, survey. Yeah. This is the problem we talk about with the left with Bernie Sanders or with, with healthcare statistics or what people. A poll is not a fact. A, a survey <laughs> is not a verifiable fact. Wait, it's really? just a fact that somebody, <laughs> it's the only fact that it provides you with is that somebody has an opinion. Yeah. That's a fact. Well, does his opinion matter? No, but we just gave you his opinion. And that's a number now. Now it's a, now <laughs> now it's it's a number. number. It's a fact. <laughs> now we got to spend time on it. <laughs> Makes another claim 91% of rape victims are female. Uh, yeah, unless you talk about men being raped in the prison population. Then it's actually a lot more. A lot more. Forevermore. Forever. Forever. And here's the thing. <laughs> with um, It's ironic because Charles Blow has also talked about Black Lives Matter quite a bit. And he talks about the over-incarceration rates of black males. Yeah, but then when referring to, the day. Yes. Then when referring to the rape stat, he shifts. No, it's, it's all women. You know that's untrue. And again, he's using this to set up the male privilege. Check it. He's asking us all to check it. And I'll read you his final paragraph uh, if you haven't had an aneurysm by then. 90%, <laughs> another claim of his, of sexual assault victims on college campus do not report the assault. This is completely untrue. Okay, he's thinking of a famous graphic. It went viral uh, with this 90% of rapes. You've probably seen an Occupy uh, Democrat Resist Fascism dot org. Yeah. Gov, give now, Indiegogo. Even Washington <laughs> Post debunked this. As I noted, FBI and Rain both estimate the number of unreported rapes is closer to 35 or 40 percent. Far cry from 90 percent. Yeah. Some would say statistically significant. Very <laughs> now, why does this matter is because he's using all of these facts to politicize an issue that really we should all be unified in, hey, Weinstein's a germ. Sexual assault is bad. This is what really bothers me with the left today is they take issues on which everybody agrees and they make it seem as though we disagree over yeah. it politically. And then talk about, oh, the gridlock in Washington. Oh, the polarization. You've taken an issue, rape, which nobody likes. 
aside from rapists, small percentage of people. And you've turned the American populace against each other. You're making it seem like we disagree on rape. And you think we're gonna find common ground on anchor babies? Piss off. So <laughs> he claims, furthermore, a 2015 Cosmopolitan Magazine survey. Survey. <laughs> <laughs> said that they have been sexually harassed at work. <laughs> so he's gone from a CDC survey. And this is the New York, this is the New York Times. Cosmo? The most respected name in news. It's like, New York Times, the most respected, it'd be like CNN, the most trusted name in news. Yeah. Really, who's your Bar source? Cosmo. Cosmo Pole. Right between the articles of top 10 fall hairdos and how to stimulate your boyfriend's frenulum. <laughs> <laughs> He's quoting Cosmo. Jeez. And by the way, even then, unfortunately, we had to do some digging into the Cosmo survey. <laughs> Here's the truth of that actual that Cosmo sucks. survey. One of the main sources of the New York Times. Let's keep going back to that. The article, it categorized sexual harassment so broadly to include hearing sexually explicit conversation, hearing sex, or even getting dating requests. <laughs> Whoops. So New York Times is important, is, is allowing this. So when we talk about, for example, Vox saying independent bloggers have no incentive to fact check any of their, the New York Times is using as their source a survey from Gosh. Cosmo, which considers someone asking you on a date to be sexual assault. Thanks, New York Times. I'm screwed. <laughs> So he uses this all to set up his coup de gras that men don't have to worry about being sexually harassed. So what does he say? He says, I'm a man, six foot two, 200 pounds, able-bodied and physically fit. <laughs> really? I moved through the world with the privilege, never, being, uh, never even considering the idea of being sexually harassed or assaulted. This is one of my male privileges and I have to check it. I just threw up a little. Only that's not true. And here's the thing, he took Weinstein, then went to George W. Bush and Mark yeah. Halpern because it's politically motivated. Um, but we, include, we know statistically it's not true, but even if you look at the recent Hollywood sex scandals, Terry Crews was harassed by a producer. Anthony Rapp by Kevin Spacey. And by the way, if ever you trusted news, just just, yeah. just look at them feigning like, did you, Kevin, Kevin Spacey is gay! <laughs> announcement, <laughs> announcement, announcement! <laughs> <laughs> Really? New York Times? It's the most trusted name in news. Dun, dun, dun. Coming up, Kevin Spacey is gay? You ever seen Fred Claus? That's your research paper for the night. <laughs> Even Kevin Sorbo was directly sexually harassed by Versace. Disappointed! Rightfully so, Kevin. <laughs> right. Understandable. He so deserved better. This, he sidesteps so quickly, avoiding some of the most prominent sexual harassment cases. And this is his final, his final claim in the article, which is really what bothers me when I see this trending. If you are not actively working, Charles M. Blow, to dismantle it, you are supporting it. Talking about patriarchy. It is not sufficient to simply not be a sexist if you are a man. You must also recognize that you benefit from the system of sexism in ways in which you may not even be aware. Every man must become a feminist. Every man must work as hard as every woman to elevate gender equality and to eliminate gendered violence. And yet, I understand how hard this can be. Constant outrage is exhausting, even about your own oppression. I'm a black man in America. I am worn threadbare <laughs> dealing with the oppressions that men who look like me endure, from racially skewed mass incarceration, oh, there it is, to being the targets of political violence. I understand that all oppressions are in some way intersectional and connected to all other violence, that the empathetic connections of allyship are multi-directional and reciprocal. You are a dick, sir! <laughs> <laughs> and he's writing for the New York Times. And watch, everything that we just said, all of the stats that we just quoted and included, even though I would say they probably hold more water than Cosmo, because I called Charles M. Blow a dick, which he is, they'll say, this is fake news. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, you know, what's so funny to me is he says, it's not enough. This is what the left yeah. does, right? It's not enough for you to even agree. <laughs> it's not enough for you to say equality is bad. It's not enough for you to say that women should be paid the same as men. Every single man must become a feminist and make my thing the only thing that is their thing. You should all take an interest in my thing. It's like someone walking in here right now like, all of you need to be interested in paintball because I'm on a team. <laughs> hey, let's walk down the logic trail. White male Republicans ooh, have historically pushed for harder sentences against hmm. sex offenders. Florida Governor Jeb Bush signed a contract like the Jessica Lunsford Act. Contrast that with feminist liberal governors, Jerry Brown, who signed bills to soften the punishment <laughs> for sex offenders. It's, we've been pretty consistent on this. If you look at this, Republicans have been pretty consistently yeah. against mm. rape, sexual harassment. It's not uh, even a question. Uh, chivalry, if the, you, this is something we believe. The rape thing was kind of our thing. It for, was kind of our yeah, thing. You know, it was kind of our thing. Hashtag no more rape. And what about something to me that's so funny? Oh, you, it's not enough. You need to become a feminist. 
You need to do this for, for if you care. What if instead, instead of just uh, fanning outrage over fake oppressions like you do, what instead of Twitter outrage, what if people don't have time for it because they're actually doing stuff? <laughs> like Francis S. Collins, head of the Human Genome Project, okay, who's counted amongst the greatest medical achievements of our time, which is completely preventing diseases and it's, it's providing treatment. Get ready to be treated. He's a white male <gasps> and a Bible-believing Christian. Apparently he doesn't take Gasp. enough time out of his day no. to, to read Charles M. Blow articles. What, a jerk. what about Bastard. medical researchers Axel Ulrich, Michael Shepard, Dennis Slamman, who had developed Herceptin. It's a breast cancer treatment judged to be one of the greatest medical advancements of the last decade. That's specifically saved millions mm. of women's lives. Guess what? All of them white males. But it's not enough. It's not enough because you know what? They might not share your opinion on feminism or your false stats or read the cutouts from Cosmo, putting them together with different fonts like a serial killer sending a ransom note. Maybe their, their garage doesn't look like that. They're too busy creating actual treatments and finding cures for cancer that will save women's lives. No, no, no. Halt the breast cancer research. Halt the human genome project because Charles M. Blow is wearing a pussy hat. Let's look to that man as a shining beacon of what we need to do if we are going to fix the problem of inequality in this country. It's the Twitter outrage. It's the women women's march. You I, listen, I appreciate that some of you white males, some of you people cure for polio. Fine, good stuff. <laughs> stuff we need. But put on. Where is your Do all pussy the things. hat? Stop everything. Deray's vest is being used in the new Planet of the Apes <laughs> film. Hey, did you like this video? Of course you did. Unless there's something wrong with you. In which case, you can comment below. What's your problem with this video? We want to hear from you, and we promise you 100%, I give you, my word is my bond, will answer every single negative comment. Uh, for those who are normal, you can leave a thumbs up and subscribe.